Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Steele Marcou, Editor-in-Chief of Veranda Magazine, and I am so thrilled to be with you this afternoon for our final Design ADAC program. Um, we have a really big treat in store for you today. That is the one and only Alexa Hampton is gonna be showing us around her fabulous New York apartment and telling us a little bit about its evolution over the years. But before we get going with that, I wanna take a moment to thank our host, ADAC, and our sponsor, Theodore Alexander. And now before we get going with our program, we're gonna hear a quick word from Theodore Alexander. you, but I was practically shopping that video just now in my head. Um, and now I am thrilled to introduce our guest today, Alexa Hampton. Alexa is a New York-based designer who has run her father's iconic design firm for over 20 years, creating interiors that are just as livable and inviting as they are elegant and stylish. Alexa has won many awards. As some of you may know, she has been published all over the place and she has several product lines. But perhaps most importantly for today, something you may not know about her is that Alexa is a great storyteller. And I am so <laughs> thrilled to have her with us to tell us a little bit about uh, the story of her very own apartment and her home today. Um, in a little bit, she's gonna actually give us, take, take us on a video tour of the apartment. Um, and during that, portion of the program, I'd love to take questions from the audience uh, while we're kind of walking along with her. So please feel free to submit your questions via the Q&A function on Zoom. Um, but before we get going with our video tour, I wanted to ask Alexa just a few questions about the house so that we can sort of have an understanding of what we're looking at. So Alexa, first of all, welcome and thank you hey. so much for doing thank this, you. for thank inviting you. us in. And thank ADAC, and I also, of course, thank, I'm so grateful to Theodore Alexander. This is going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to see some of some of the pieces that inspired your collection in your apartment, which is so exciting. It's the, it's the best laboratory, that's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So tell us a little bit about the apartment. How long have you lived there, and what kind of building is it in? It um, is a building from the late 1920s. So it's a, it's a pre-war building, but it has wow. a couple of unusual features. Um, it has casement windows that you'll see that are really charming. And it has fireplaces and it's got some steps. So when I first moved in here, I was in my very early twenties and it was a rental. And wow. It's because I was here already, actually in two apartments, that I was able, to, my husband and I were able to buy an apartment because, you know, when you're a sponsor, when you, when you rent and it goes co-op, it makes it so much easier. Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, New York has, has famously difficult ways of keeping riffraff like myself out of buildings. <laughs> but I was able to go circuitously and sneak in. I love um, it. And then uh, my, so my husband and I lived in under 600 square feet here for five years. Amazing. And then we bought a two bedroom and we had our happy life there. And was, the two bedroom had, like, was it, a, was it next to it or in a, where was the two bedroom? No, that was our first owned apartment. Got it. So okay. we went from, we st I started off on the 12th floor. Then I went to the seventh floor. Now I'm on the 10th floor. Nice. And, um, we we bought this two bedroom 
And then we were able to have twin sons there. I mean, I'm a New Yorker. I can, I, I don't need, you know, voluminous <laughs> spaces. And the and, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'd love to have it, but I'm totally cool not having it. <laughs> and then um, just as we were about to have our daughter, the, the apartment of one bedroom uh, became available in kind of the weird way to combine it. So we, so now we were straddling two elevator halls and then finally a third apartment came through that was two bedrooms and it's, you're going to, you're going to see how things had to shift. And, you know, there was a moment in time when we were all bedroom and then a playroom that had a fence around it. I love it. I love it. (laughs) Um, I mean, I was totally being the worst decorator hypocrite on earth. I love it. And as you were, you know, combining apartments and refiguring and reconfiguring, did you live there throughout or did you have to move out? No, we lived there throughout. Oh, I mean, wow. we simply, we could not afford yeah. to, to move out. Um, yeah. So we didn't. So there was one night when my husband and I were sleeping in my daughter's bedroom, which had and you'll see it. It's a it's a very small room, and it had a twin bed and a trundle, and we were I was on the trundle, he was on the twin, and then in the middle of the night, the um the electric started doing strange things. Oh God! And we're like, wow, we are prisoners of war. <laughs> but you know, yeah. like that's life. You got to you got to do what you got to do. I love it. it. There's something so charming about you know the fact that again you've kind of just made it work over the years as your family has grown, as circumstances have changed. Um, you know, I happen to have read a story that you wrote about this amazing apartment, uh, and and you've lived there throughout lots of kind of big events for New York yeah. City too. And and your relationship with your home and your apartment has you know it's kind of been there for you, if you will, um, in these yeah. kind of big moments too, which is just. Again, having thinking about you being there for a long time, um, it's interesting. Yeah, and and I come from sticky parents. My parents bought the apartment my mother still lives in right before I was born. I love that. Um, So we we are not. Yeah, change comes slowly for us. I love it. I love it. Well, let's let's just dive in. If you're ready to show us around, let's get. I am ready to show you around now because this is three small apartments. It has, um, and I'm going to try and walk slowly so everybody doesn't <laughs> barf. Um, so it, it has tons of doors because Ooh. there are three front doors, three back doors, and then door doors. So yeah, it's a little weird, but I'm going to take you to the front door and then I'm, I'm going to stand in front of my front door. And now I'm going to flip this screen for you. Excellent. And this is the entry hall. So this is what Um, you see if you're coming in. Yep. When you walk in the door, this is what you see. And it is, um, you know, I love classicism. So you will see lots of little tempietos and um, lots of little, you know, the Parthenon and little temples there. So this is just... What's what's interesting about this room is that it's got all these doorways coming off of it, but it has no actual light. So it's very it's very decorated, um, mm-hmm. though I suppose the whole apartment is. So <laughs> over there, that is um, in the real world that would have been a bedroom, but we turned it into a dressing room for my husband and me. And you go downstairs to the living room we were just in. And then very slowly, 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 you go down here into the dining room, Beautiful. which was briefly our bedroom. Oh my God. And you go over here if you want to see Percy Hi, coming Pop. in, <laughs> coming in on time with his ball. So first, I'm going to walk you into the living room. Okay. And here, here are those fun windows I was oh. telling you about. Yeah. And, you know, I, it's just... They're, they make me so happy. Yeah. And I love the quirkiness of having um, three steps down into the living room. Beautiful. It kind of gives and, a nice definition. It's like now you're in a different space. Yeah. And it's also like as close as, as New Yorkers get to a house. 
like oh, steps. Yay, yeah. steps. <laughs> yeah, a change of level of some of exactly. Um, and so this is obviously the fireplace wall of the living room, and this this is where it all happens, people. This is where my husband and I fight over that seat. <laughs> that is the good seat. That's the, the prime seat. Yeah, it's totally the prime seat. So there you get a little sense of how you walk up and into that entry. Gorgeous. Um, um, you can see the metallic, kind of the metallics. Um, yeah, and I, and each of the rooms kind of, if you think of it as a wheel, each room has a different color. So I thought to have the metallic in the entrance to bounce around light. And then it's got little, little bits of color in it in the leaves and butterflies yeah. that Gracie does so well. Um, so yeah, that was probably the hardest, the hardest room to do. So now you can see why we like this spot. And there I am in the corner on mirrors. Ah, is I love you. there is a fake bookcase that goes into the dining room so cool and just so i can show you how it works oh that's amazing it closes on both sides i love it yeah i gotta say i love a hidden door that's um brilliant. i hate it because it take it means that i don't have actual proceed so long um that i don't have oh that is the hidden door um it, it makes me sad that I don't have more storage for books there, but it's really great to have this this door. And I'm going to push in these, push these back in, and you will see. Here's the hinge. Super cool because it lays very Scooby Doo. Flat. Yeah. And this, I think, is maybe the prettiest view in the apartment. I love that. Now I'm going to show you a little bit too much reality steel and I apologize. That's okay, we, just, we like reality. Here, here we come into the dining room and it's all looking very promising until there. Oh my <laughs> this God, is where my husband has been set up when he's not at the office. And because we have no ability, oh, those my trees look like they're about to fall. Um, to have a chandelier. Instead, we we dine under the treetops. I love that. That's so clever. Um, and they are fake, I'm sad to admit. Um, so over here, over this um, uh, buffet is a map that I printed from the Library of Congress. And we printed it, we folded it, we crushed it, we poured tea on it, and then we framed it. So that it had like a little bit of age. Love that. And for anyone who doesn't know, there's no view of what Alexa is showing. Uh oh, is there no view? Okay. I, I'm kind of. You can to, see it. I'm seeing it, but okay. Now, now we have. Now okay. there is. And I'm so, also now seeing you. Like your view is now larger, which is perfect. Great. Yeah. Do not feel shy about telling me to fix my shaky camera work. So there, there is that bookcase that this right. used to be our bedroom. And so the bookcase was built on this side. So when we combined apartments, we just bust through in that small, that small part. And this I is some of my so design library. Um, and then I have a pair oh, of these hand. mirrors. And that I bought these from Mark Roberts from Markham. And he used them in a beautiful Kips Bay room, and and I stole them from him. I love it. Okay, I'm going to. This is oops, the world's smallest guest bedroom. <laughs> like, no, I'm not kidding. This is it. This is all you're going to see, and you can see that we made it smaller um, when you look at the window. So yeah. we gave extra room to my daughter, and that's that's why. So it's this cute little day bed. And I just bought this music stand. Ooh, cool. To use it as a desk Beautiful. when you're in bed or um, uh, on the sofa, whatever. If you need that desk, I can now wheel it around for myself. That's awesome. Love Another that. thing I did, this is one of those weird 
parts of the apartment where you can tell that it it's not a single apartment because it's got odd odd jigs and jags. And so I, my great friend Celia Roge, who is a fine arts photographer, she I, I bought from her this photo of an enfilade that she took, so that it appears that it's an extension of the hallway. I love it. It sort of looks like the hallway keeps going. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. When of course it doesn't. So we have to turn over here. Um, this is, of course, the closet where we keep track of all the kids' heights. Oh, now, now, I'm walking in. This is good news that my daughter's not home yet because she'd be irked, I'm sure. This is my daughter's room. It, as I would, This is where my husband and I woke up that night <laughs> when I was on the trundle. And what we did is we pulled that much space from the guest bedroom so Got that we could give her this bed um, stuck into the niche. And before anybody asks, yes, it's a it's crap to have to make this bed um, because it's pushed against the wall. I but imagine. we suffer for our art. The art and is hers, beautiful. Um, that is a photograph by Massimo Listri. And oh. I love the idea of the room continuing and opening since um, since it's a, a concise room um, and it's on a wall of suede Bad. and you know the mahogany doors really made the apartment I think I mean they, they make it feel super I mean I am grown up I'm emphatically grown up but it's sometimes I don't think of myself that way um, but I think did, the apartment is did you cool. add the mahogany doors or did they were they there oh no I, I made them oh you had them made I made them, them and because uh, it was a, you know, because it was a rental apartment, a lot of things. Oh, the name of the photographer is, well, there are two photographers. One is Celia Roge, um, Celia, C-E-L-I-A, last name spelled R-O-G-G-E. And then the other photographer is Massimo Listri, uh, Massimo, and then L-I-S-T-R-I. And I'm going to look, look, you can see a hand of a child. I'm not going in there. <laughs> but this is actually this room, which uh, a lot of people have, you know, there's a great photograph of it that, that bumps around the, um, the internet. Sure this, know. this room is being co-opted. So I can, so I can do some work here. So Beautiful. there's a little, there's a little reality. Love it. This is my boys' room, and again, does not usually look this clean. Uh, <laughs> this is a total theater for your benefit. I love it. And they used oh. to have bunk beds. They're quite tall now. They're 14. And so we made these full beds and this, this bookcase. Um, and then we had Dean Barger come and do this great mural of the Campidoglio in Rome. That is so cool, the effect that that creates. Yeah, so yeah, I just wanted to, again, pretend like it. A, it they had a, a window above their bed. I love it. Such great and use of art. I have uh, bamboo blinds all over the place. Beautiful. And- oh, Full color on the ceiling, Alexa, can we see that? Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah, so when they were babies, I had a map printed and it was on the ceiling and they loved it. And I think that really got me into, it got me into my ceiling decoration phase. Totally. Um, so anyway, this is, uh, this is on our way out and we try to, oh, the bamboo blinds are from the shade store and not surprisingly, they are from my own collection. And that desk you see of my daughter's is just something I bought on the internet that folds away for, for this moment in time. Love it. Now, I'm going to flip the camera so you can see me <laughs> as I walk into my bedroom. Fantastic. There's so because it's three apartments, there are these three tiny kitchens, and so it actually worked out perfectly because one has become the laundry, one became became the bar, and and then the final one is is the kitchen proper, which I will show you. We're walking the secret way into my bedroom. 
Cool. Which is really fun. It's it's a small room, so it's hard to get the whole idea oh, for you. So beautiful. But we started, well, you're going to see in the before and afters, we had to redo this room almost immediately because I totally bungled it. <laughs> hard to imagine you bungling anything. When it, uh, it was it was for a good cause. I was trying to save money and be good and then it just didn't look good. Yeah. Um so I have this really fun canopy bed. So fun. With um I mean it's so Henry VIII. It has these um frogs in the corner. And then I went to Hyde Park molding and we did, you know, Beautiful. we created these coffers and then put these medallions up. I love And that. then on the ceiling behind the medallion, I used a ticking stripe wallpaper. I love that. Just to kind of bring the tenor of the room down because it's it takes itself seriously, this room. So I needed to like lighten it up a little bit. I love it. This is what my dog currently amuses himself with, eating oh, all so of my tassels. Um, there he is, in fact, probably destroying something. Alexa, I like that you have a landline phone next to your bed. I sure do. I got it on. I got it on eBay. I love it. Yeah, you I, can't just like run down to Radio Shack anymore and get one, huh? <laughs> well, I bet you I could, but I was I was in a hurry. Sure. Um, and look at all the craziness of these rugs. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, the color is so good. I know it's really it's really crazy. But I, I think my father would have a heart attack if he saw this room. Really? Just I just don't think he would. He would ever say, oh, I can see Alexa living in a dark purple room, but <laughs> I think he'd love it. I think he would love it. And the oh, view, oh. the views in this apartment are really fun. If you are like me and you like a city, a cityscape. Yeah. And as a, and behind that is my television. Oh, brilliant. Um, and this was a piece of furniture, a big bookcase I had designed for a show house in Southampton in 2004. And I just um, chopped it up and kept the bottom half. I love it. What's all the, right. What's the wall covering? Is it? Um... It's also Gracie. I gave okay. her, um, Jennifer Gracie, a book spine. Mm -hmm. And they did, you know, the, the blocks. But it has an almost suede-like appearance. Ah, oh, so cool. And my nails look amazing against <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, for the question, how do I access the TV? This is the janky homemade thing. So here's another beautiful photograph by my friend Celia Roge. And I just pull this off. And there it is. And tilt it. Yeah. There you see it. Brilliant. And it I'm not gonna lie, it spends most of its time down. Sure. Why not? And there's Percy sitting on my blanket chest. Blanket oh. chests are my new favorite thing on earth because that white, the white duvet that everybody has just needs to go somewhere. It needs but to it needs to be, it, it needs to be close. Yes, that's so, true. Um, in this room, you will see, this is a jib door. And tell me to hurry up if you need me to. No, I'm This is a jib door. And this is a jib door. So let oh, me yeah. tell you why that is important. So this room, its doorways are where it is, right? They had to go where they had to go. And I didn't want to interrupt. I wanted at least one wall uninterrupted because I've got um, window, window, and then the bed. Right. So you know it's a door because it has a doorknob. But what makes it a jib is that it's on an offset pivot hinge and you run the baseboard across the bottom and you treat the wall like wall. Love it. I love it. I'm writing this down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I am. Um, I, I'm like, I have a meeting with architects next week. I'm writing this down. I, and I've got watercolors that my father painted. That's also in Rome. That's of Constantine at the Campidoglio. Yeah. And then I have in here, um, like here is a birthday card from him. I was oh. going to Italy to study, but he put a shoe in because he knows that nobody goes to Florence without shoe shopping. Oh, I love it. And then I have some of my own sketches, like a little fake Beautiful. sketch of the Van Dyke. And there's a little sketch of a street looking towards the Duomo. Alexa, and here, that's a hidden talent. Well, 
It's, it's not that developed. I can draw, but I'm not an artist. So as we come along this side, we're back into the living room. So I'm gonna show you that the door again. I'm going slow so you don't get sick. Slow so you You're don't get great. sick. You're doing great. And this is another Celia photograph of the Greek galleries at the Met. Again, Greek husband. And there's that jib door that we just walked through. And I love how you, the paneling kind of runs along it. Again, treated like It walls. sure does. Gorgeous. And I, I worked with a graphic designer to make each of these patterns that we then put on the styles and rails and then within the paneling on the dado. So I was having a Mondragino moment. I love that. Um, moment. <laughs> and then there's a stand on my rug. Um, <laughs> then as we come in here, this is the kitchen. So this is going straight into the kitchen. Uh, who doesn't have, I've got some weird love of armory. So there are all of these little things that refer to it. Love. And I have my Fornicetti plates with recipes. Beautiful. Um, and then this is the breakfast hangout. That's a clever use of space. Very well used. And, um, and we've got the, we got Walker saying, we just put these down, um, porcelain wood planks. Oh, they're, those are so beautiful. I can't believe they're porcelain. Um, it's, we, we didn't have it for a long time. The, the floor was too sticky. Yeah. And it was grossing us out. Yeah. Now, this is anybody, I know this isn't like a budget show, but <laughs> if anybody ever wants to do a backsplash and you can't think of something and you want to, but you want to do something personal, so I cool. had this printed out on tin. So it was very inexpensive. Cool. Alexa, Pavlos, Michael, Marcos, and Aliki. So it's restaurant Alpa Memorial for everybody in the family. I love it. And then we have our favorite, our favorite food. That is so great, Alexa. I love and, it. And um, yeah, it's really cute. That's so cute. Cheap and cheerful. Cheap and cheerful. Which and is not necessarily a philosophy I believe in. <laughs> well, it's just me, personal. Okay, so I'm going to take you back into the living room. Um, and I think we're going to look at some slides. We're going to look at some slides. That's right. I hope um, nobody didn't make anyone um, sick. No, that was fabulous. We got one question that I'm actually, we got a really good question, but I'm going to save it. Um, Joyce, I see your question. We're going to save it for the end because we're going to actually get to see um, some slides. So let me go ahead and share my screen. This is always the exciting part of the program. Right. Um, there okay. we are. There we are. <laughs> yeah. You see, look at that. You see us and us, uh, <laughs> just hilarious. Okay. So let's dive into looking at some pictures now. Um, and I'm going to kind of like ask you some questions as we talk and, you know, again, audience members, Feel free to um, submit questions. We're going to save time for them at the end. But, you know, one thing that I think was very evident um, just in hearing you talk about the apartment a little bit and in kind of having you walk us through it is that, you know, you did not own the entire apartment um, all at once. You've been sort of joining things together. Oh, yeah. Over, yeah. over a 15 year period. 15 years, exactly. But the whole thing sort of feels like one space and it all feels original. And I'm kind of curious how you were able to um, see what, what sort of design details you brought in to kind of integrate old with new. Well, figuring out the entrance, which you're looking at right now, mm -hmm. is really hard because, you know, it, they had these little, little Tom and Jerry mouse holes, which I'm not <laughs> a fan of. Um, and that bedroom that you see on the left, that's now my dressing room. So I moved the door so it would end on a window. Right. Um, and yeah, I mean, we just had to knit it together. Certainly the doors um, create some uh, like a constant design. Those sense. beautiful mahogany doors. Yeah. Um, really pretty. 
Um, and I put in plaster molding from Hyde Park. And as you can see, greasy wallpaper. And I don't know why I love such over the top things like chairs with griffins on them, but I do. <laughs> so, so, you know, like I, what I would do for myself, but I wouldn't necessarily do for, uh, or, or wouldn't feel that I've been asked to do for somebody else. I love it. Um, I also, um, I designed the stair, the stair railing and, oh, yeah. um, I'm, I'm spacing out on the wonderful company who I always work with. It's two words. It's not Hyde Park because that's the molding. It's, um, I will, I will come up with it and tell you later. But so I know this is, I know this railing in the video and I thought it was just so beautiful. Thank you. Um, so living room, living room before. Yeah. And the windows are old. So they, well, I'm not doing anything to them. Yeah. And I didn't want, um, I didn't want curtain panels because I was trying to capture every last inch of this. Sure. Of this apartment. And that is our tree who, I don't know why, how he's still alive, but he is still alive and well. I this is that. my living tree. Amazing. And um, yeah, I think, I think the, the fact that it had these beams in the ceiling and it had the cool windows and a fireplace gave me a lot. And it even a lot. Here's another view of that paneling that you created, just yeah. showing our viewers that it kind of, you know, from that jib door, obviously it continues all the way around. And the red version of it is in the living room. And then a green version of it is in the dining room. Which, oh yeah, here's more of the paneling. And that bench that you're looking, that's one of my fireplaces for Chesney's. I love but, it. But um, the really fun thing is that bench, which may, which has a life in the Theodore Alexander collection. And I'll tell you about it when we look at it later. As does that bookcase, the mark. This, the, this guy. And there's yeah. another view of those like fabulously curvy railings. Yeah, they're like feathers. They're so pretty. Gold, it's Gold Coast. That's Gold the name Coast, of the, okay. Yeah, uh, they do, I do tons of stairs with them and they, they forge them in um, um, Czechoslovakia or Chechia. Um, yeah. Pointing out that gym door. Okay. So here are two of the pieces again, from those, we just saw the kind of inspiration yeah. there and there. So the bookcase was a no brainer. Like everybody needs a bookcase and not everybody needs tall bookcases, Good especially point. not nowadays when we read so much on a device, but the great thing about these bookcases, is they, they obviously are scratching an architectural itch for me. I love it. And the bench, it's called the HP bench because the top, which has the letter on it, forms a, an H for Hampton. And then my Greek husband's name is Pavlos Papa Yuryu. So those are two Greek pies, oh, the, the letter pie as you look at it. I think, and I had I think you've told me that before, but seeing it from this view, it's like, you really see the pie. I love yeah, it. Yeah, you really see the pie. You have no idea how long it took me to figure out how it's been for trying those initials. Um, but I had a friend who said, oh, that's so cool. Did you find it? And I was like, who on earth? Like, no, I, can you imagine if I found it? But I think um, it, it is so totally symmetrical that it, it, it it um it, it's more than just you know it's an object not just letters for sure um and i love the way you have it just in front it's like perfect for in front of a fire yeah bench. it is a perfect fender bench height yeah yeah it's great well, and, and you know i need every um, okay now seat. we're going into your bedroom okay so that was the bedroom <laughs> and you can see there were no coffers yep and there were no convector covers, which is what we all build to cover our air conditioners. And also the windows were dark um, metal on the inside, which I wanted, I wanted them to be white. Got it. So they had to be replaced. So this was a first version of my bedroom and it is in every regard uh, related to what came after except for the color palette. So the reason why I changed it was that um, it didn't look like the master bedroom. Uh, it just looked yeah, like, it, like a, it kind of feels like a guest bedroom. It just looks like a bedroom. Yeah. It, it was in no way hierarchically more important than, Love oh, the canopy is drilled into the, um, 
the coffers by my wonderful upholstery, Anthony Lawrence Belfair. And I, and I don't have the foot curtains because uh, it gets in the way of our view of the TV yeah. and, and out the room. Right. But this to me looked much sexier. I, yeah. That, I was like, this is, is a, a master. It's such a fun, like before, during, final yeah. evolution, because you really did keep so much of the structure and kind of organization of the room in place, but it feels so much more special. Well, and when you see my bedroom when it was in the dining room. Um, oh, right. The, the, I, I was trying to reuse what I had. Right. But the, these colors, I didn't. You know, it took my having this final iteration of the apartments together for me to say, okay, now I'm going to do color in my house. Because until then, I might have been moving. Who knows? Right. Who knows? Because we were cramped and we were tight. But as my husband and I always said, like, the many more people do much more with less. I love but that. when this happened, we were like, okay, we're going color. Yeah. Um, by the way, I would also submit that people do less with more, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, that, it goes in both directions. It but, goes in both directions. Yeah, it goes in both directions. I, I, um, I kind of teased for myself what's coming next, but I want to ask you a question about color before we get to more Theodore Alexander product. Yeah. Uh, because there are, I mean, if people can recall from the video tour, we're going to see photos of it in a minute here. But there are some really strong colors. There's this kind of deep, this beautifully deep burgundy purple shade in your master bedroom. The kitchen is black. The dining yeah. room has that great green. green. Yeah. You know, so how did you, how do you like, like I'm someone who loves these saturated colors too, but I, how do I like marry them together and not make it feel like I'm in a rainbow? It's a frenetic. Yeah. Well, that's why I felt like the hallway was an important fulcrum. Like from the hallway, we could go into color. So the, right. the hallway is, is the stable center. Got it. And then the other rooms turn into follies. And yeah. I have that same antelope carpet shooting off in each direction mm -hmm. off of that entry. And I think that little saying about um, an animal print is a neutral, I, I subscribe to that. I love that. I think it is. So that is another part of that holding center. And then everything can fly off as crazy colors. But um, you know, there was a, I, I started placing the artwork first. Oh, interesting. And that, so the living room has colorful artwork, but not colored walls. Yep. And then the family room, Percy, the family room has those really pretty blue walls and it has fairly monochrome artwork. So, but, and then I did what I always tell people to do with their children is instead of actually asking them what they want and being confronted with what they want, oh, right. um, I said to my daughter who was six at the time, I said, um, you know, what's your favorite color? And she said green. So I always describe it as she did her room. Oh, totally. That means it's like a Jedi home. mind trick. Yeah, I love it. She thinks she did it too, or she did then at least. Exactly. Yeah. So here um, are two more pieces. Yeah. That have kind of inspiration in your your own bedroom. Yeah, and actually in the family room that Matilda nightstand is, I have that exact table in my family room. Mm -hmm. And then the the um, blanket chest, which you can do with a leather top or a fabric top, which, you know, helps you pull it into the scheme. Yeah. It, you know, not just wood, but it's also fabric that will help you, you know, maybe you don't have curtains. All you have is your headboard and 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 a chest, even that alone with bedding and walls and um, fabric that can define your bedroom. Yeah, it's like another soft surface, but plus I mm -hmm. love this detail. So yeah, beautiful. a little modified Greek key. Love I sure know how to beat a dead horse. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> that dead horse being Greek husband. <laughs> okay, oh, this what is are we looking kitchen. at here? This is the kitchen. This is the kitchen as it, as it began its life. Amazing, amazing. And, um, and there it is after. And I know that all of my lovely friends in Atlanta are horrified by how little the <laughs> kitchen is. And it opens up to that little breakfast bar. But yeah, it's little. You've got little little apartments here in it the city. Works, so I think one thing that, you know, 
one thing that really anchors it is having a window over the sink. You might as well be in a McMansion somewhere in the South. Just kidding. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But it's like, I think that, you know, kind of, I don't know, allows it um, to live larger than it actually is. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you just gotta, you, you have to roll with what you got. Yeah. Um, there's that breakfast bar again. Oh, and a fun thing that I did in the breakfast bar that I love and that I, it's, I would encourage anybody doing a kitchen to do as well is I got silver luggage tag kind of things oh. and I drilled them in and, um, I wrote in calligraphy what's in the cabinet. So that. there, there are cabinets like this that have glass so you can see what's through them. But sure. for the rest that are behind closed doors, it's nice to know exactly where you're going and what's there. And again, it's sort of a nice way to add, you know, a personal touch to what could be kind yeah. of a servicey space. Here's that guest bedroom. That tiny, tiny guest bedroom. Love it. Love the color. And then, and you know, and that's yeah, that's the old bedroom, which is now the dining room. I love it. I love it. Um, so that white with all the bookcases um, yeah. was and and the dramatic scale of the room, which has higher ceilings, was it was fine to be white then. Right. But the minute it went down into the smaller room and that didn't have bookcases, um, it it just fell flat. So that's yeah. why that's why the color had to come in. This is before you changed out the railings. I think. Exactly. Yep. That is before I changed out the railings. And here they and are. That is, oh. That's it now. Amazing. I can't believe I have a dining room. I feel so psyched that I have a dining room. It just, it feels, it feels like such a special thing in New York. And during this time where we've had to, to get, you know, use tables everywhere yeah. to, to work from, having this was a huge luxury. I tell yeah, everybody needs like that surface. And of course a dining room is even sometimes more useful than a desk because you can really spread out and for sure. For sure. That's so great. But that does feel like a luxury in New York City and, and to have a dining room with a mantle at the fireplace too. So pretty. I mean crazy. And that mantle is from Jam. Beautiful. And um yeah. Gorgeous. So my husband had a few things that he wanted. He wanted a green dining room. He <laughs> wanted maps. He wanted a fancy Japanese toilet, and he <laughs> wanted a good, um, a good, like draw for the range. What do you call those? Oh yeah, a hood, a, hood, a proper hood. And we couldn't get the hood to work because the the rules in New York are if you're gonna have that kind of perforation that smoke's going to come out of you have to be at least three feet away from your neighbor's window oh wow. and we were not and you're not three so, feet so funny to think about um this is i'm going to ask one uh audience question because it feels slightly is this if you can remind us did you make this map look older alexa yes okay we we digitally printed it, we folded it, we cut it, we crumpled it, oh my smoothed God. it out, and poured tea on it. I love it. And then, it, but then you framed it in this frame that makes it look like it's a two hundred yeah, year old antique. Yeah, map. yeah, exactly. So now, someone, I didn't. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I didn't see the rest of that question. I just saw the beginning of it. it said you love high and low. Um, which to me kind of reminded me of that map. Um, yeah. And she says, it's just beautiful. What is your go-to natural fiber floor covering that works well with children and a dog? Which is a good question. Um, well, I have apple matting, also known as Irish matting in my living room. And I love it, but it it, it is dainty. <laughs> you know, it, it's the dog definitely screwed it up a bit. And when my husband started working at the dining room table, he really destroyed, um, sorry, uh, he really destroyed it. So I got a great outdoor sisal for the dining room. Is that, and you can kind of see, the, well, this may be the- That's only, the apple matting. That's the apple matting. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. We've got a few more um, Theodore Alexander products yeah. to look at here. 
so oh, yeah, when I, when I do my house, it's a laboratory that then feeds everything. So having those mirrors in the dining room definitely made me want to do um, a fanciful um, Mughal shape, a Mughal arch. Oh, and wow. I love my dining room chairs to death. Yeah. And there's that sideboard. Um, well, and also Theodore Alexander has a metal shop, a forge. And so you can see that all of that paneling, it's actual brass inlay. Wow. That's yeah, cool. it's really, it, I don't know why, it's so fun. Like brass inlay thrills me. It's, it's and, really you know, the column has storage in it and it looks great dark and it looks great light. I love it. Those Hell dining chairs. Thanks, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Those dining chairs look so comfortable. They are. And, um, okay, so that's the, if you go there, that was the, uh, that's the blue room where my kids are. Okay. That, so that's the family room. And that's back in the day, I painted the painting above the sofa. Beautiful. Um, and um, those chairs, the French chairs, you see them still in my current living room. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, this is when, you know, in the very beginning, I kept it really neutral because I just didn't know how long we were going to be here. Yeah, that makes sense. There's the other side. Yeah. There's the other side, which is exactly like that still, except it's blue. And then that's the TV is in the lower register of that Napoleon the Third bookcase. Over, oh yeah, right there. You can yeah. kind of see it. And it pulls out and swivels. It's, and there it is still. And there it know. is. There it is still. And so now this room, um, if you go to the, I think you have one more slide of this room. Yep. Yeah, I'm taking that sofa out for the moment and I'm putting in a pink raspberry colored banquette Ooh. and I'm getting a huge table there and it's going to be like our study hall, both for me and for the kids. I love that. That's I so do too. Cool. I'm psyched. And I'm going to leave all of the artwork there and the sconces and that all works. The artwork is fab. I love it. And that coffee table, I'm sad to say, I did a version of it for Theodore Alexander and the Theodore Alexander version is so much nicer <laughs> so i'm gonna have it there to, yeah it's just cooler it's got that cartouche cut out it, yeah. it's just it's just cooler um and i love a spoon back chair as oh. as you could see and i think i if think I could, my if I could click to purchase from this slide i would i'd get two of those right now yeah, it's, <laughs> uh, i just why are spoon back chairs so cool so cool um, and then I've got the two-tiered brass end table also in that room. And the Sloan, you and I have talked about before. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a folding chair. So good. Um, that So I have it kicking around. I have a bunch of them in that blue room that then get used for excess dining when needed. When needed. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. And then a great Showwood Club chair. Beautiful. We're going to get through so, a couple more slides and then we'll take questions. Yeah. So this is what's current now my daughter's room. Oh, it started okay. off as this, which was like a little study. And then it turned into a nursery for two people. And then it turned into that. It turned into a nursery for two people. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, that was not expected. <laughs> for, yeah. Times two. Is this another, I didn't even notice this on the video tour, but is this another um, jib door actually? Too? Yes. Both of those, we just needed to get her more storage. Yeah. So she's got tons of storage. And if you look, I mean, you can see it's two colors of green on the wall. Beautiful. And then I took a Samuel and Son tape trim designed by Michael Smith I love and, that. and created a chair rail. That's, I love, that's so clever. I love that. I know I got really, I got really, I mean, I didn't do it myself, so it's not do it yourself, but I, I did a lot of things for the first time in the apartment, which is great. That's, yeah. That's really fun. Um, your daughter did a really nice job with her room, by the way. Yeah, my daughter's a classicist. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Poor thing. <laughs> okay. Here and that is, yeah, that's her bed, which I just love that yeah. low slung and with some wood showing. That, on the oh, side I, of the headboard. Yeah. That gives it kind of a nice um, 
I don't know, refinement or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, if it's just a fabric headboard and I love fabric headboards, but it's, it's, again, it's not like special, special. Exactly. Really beautiful. And that was my original bedroom that turned into the boys' room. And this was, um, you know, that bed with the Fortuni is now in Southampton in our, in my mother's house, in our bedroom there. I love that. And um, this was, you know, this when this was such a pretty bedroom and it looked great also with the mahogany doors mm. so that the real femininity of it was a little bit tempered. Mm-hmm. But I'm obsessed with these window treatments. So beautiful. Yeah, they were they were taffeta and they were just this really pretty color. Yeah. But they needed to come to the side on each side because of the air conditioner that centered um on that wall. Got it. And then here it is that, with, yep. with their map. I love it. With the map. And so I um, my I had these Robert Indiana numbers. And, you know, my father's family's from Indiana and I had grown up with the Saarinen chairs in my parents' um, 70s apartment. Love it. And then we, that desk you see is one of those gyroscopic desks that pulls down and it's a bed. That's so cool. You don't have to take anything off your desk because it goes with gravity and it stays in position even as you're opening it. Oh my gosh. But, um... But, and then we built the bunks above it. Love it. This frame around, that's so cool. And that, and now there it is now. No. Um, same like call for same the room. <laughs> I mean, so many iterations. It's hilarious. I love it. Oh my gosh, we made it all the way through. I can't believe that. Woo-hoo! Okay. Let me see if I can, hold on, bring us back. Okay, here we are. Um, so we're going to take some questions now in our yes. remaining minutes. Um, okay. This is what, this is like the first question we got and probably one of my favorites. And that is what is your favorite part of your home? My favorite part of my home is this seat that I'm in right now. Not because when you sit in it, and this is what I was showing you before, this is what my husband and I fight over. Right. It's this cool view out the window into the mirror, which makes it looks like like the window oh, yeah. continues yeah. and then the next window. So great. It's like such it's a just, nice long view. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a long view and it's a lot of light and who doesn't love an enfilade, right? Who doesn't? I love it. <laughs> Once you can see your, your hidden bookcases, uh, it's a great view. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's a very, it's a very soothing view. And because we're right by all of this activity on a bridge, it's like the world is is spinning just outside. That's so cool. I love that. Okay, here's a question. Um, it's about your favorite. What is your favorite paint to use on the doors for that gloss? Now, your doors, I don't think, are painted. But if my you doors are not painted, um, but when I do paint doors, I usually use um, uh, satin and pervo. Satin and I mean, it used to be oil low luster, and uh, and oil gives a beautiful, a beautiful sheen. But we know that oil is not good for the sweet people painting <laughs> the doors. Right. Right. So we, we've got to we got to do better. We've, we've had to move away from the oil. Um, I'm going to stick with paint for a minute, and then I'm going to come back to another question that came a little earlier. But uh, the green. What's that? In the bedroom. I don't know if you happen to recall the colors or even at least the company. Um, the two green um, paint colors of your daughter. Do you remember um, the colors? I don't, but I can get back to you with that. I will oh. put it on. I will put it on Instagram at some point in the next week. Okay, that's amazing. If and then while you're at it, um, the blue paint color from your like three or four family room. Ago. Well, the family oh. room too, but the. Okay, so the original bedroom with the Fortuny fabric, that's the one. I mixed myself. Oh. But it's very close to Teresa's green farewell. Oh, oh yes. Okay. Um, which is strange because it's I see it as blue. A lot of people tell me it's green and I tell them they're wrong. 
<laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay, here's a question from my next door neighbor, which I love, in Birmingham, Alabama. Did you study architecture? You clearly love classical architecture and are strongly influenced by it. By the way, she is an architect, so that's where she's coming. So I did not study it formally, but in in my household, much in you know growing up, much architecture was discussed, <laughs> like all the time, and. I don't know how to ski, for example, because instead of going to ski in winter, we'd go wherever we'd go and look at houses and look at museums. So that. when I was an undergrad, I actually studied something. It, it was literature and society was what it was called. And you studied history through the lens of the literature of the period. Fantastic. And I did that because I knew I was having my college paid for. And I knew I would likely go to grad school. And I went to grad school for art history, not for architecture. But, um, and, you know, I, part of me wishes I had studied architecture, but I don't know that I could with, you know, the math required and the engineering. I'm, I may be just better off being a decorator. I love it. It's, I mean, you've got kind of the best of both worlds in that way. Um, Okay, somebody else is asking, is a jib door on a pivot hinge? And you did specify the hinge. I actually wanted to know this too. What kind of hinge? Yeah, the hinge, um, and I'll show you some more jib doors actually in my, I'm, I'm like heavy on the jib door. Love it. So I will show you a, a, something useful. So here we are, and here's another jib door, right? This is in my front hall. Yep. Um, and it's an extra Ooh. shoe closet. Ooh. But here's the cool thing. So this is the offset pivot hinge. Okay, cool. Um, so it's like a knuckle. Yep. And it's cut into the baseboard down here. Ooh, yep. Um, oh, you can't see? Can you see or you can't see? I can, I can see, but I am seeing that note from someone in the audience saying that they can't see. They can't, maybe they can't see me because I turned my camera to show oh, you. Oh, that's true. Door. If you can see the door, then you're seeing. Yeah, you're seeing what you want to. Now, here's a trick that Dick, from David Easton's office. When you do a beautiful paper, um, oh, yes. wrap, it wrap it to the middle Brilliant. of the door because then it won't peel. That's brilliant. It, it it's a major, when, when I first learned that, I was like, oh, thank you, <laughs> David Easton. Um, but when you're doing then a custom door, I mean, a custom paper like this is, um, oh yeah, a, well, yeah, you could, if you use a sausage, I'm not sure it would be as invisible. Ah, uh, um, there's another hinge. Sorry, I'm walking quickly. I'm going to okay. flip it to myself for a second. There's another hinge. We use a lot in my office when we want the wall to be embraced by its enclosure, such as these are. Yes. And that is a Harmon hinge. Harmon hinge. So that when it's opened, it lies completely flat. We were just talking about these with the veranda staff just the other day, and um, that's the first time I'd heard that reference, but I'm fascinated by that. Of course, you hear it twice. And, yeah, and is it. that true? It's like you so hear when, it two days in a row. Totally. <laughs> it's like when you learn a new word and then you hear it everywhere. But you know um, yeah, missed all the screen time of the what? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but so when you do use a Harman hinge and they and your door turns into wall, essentially, when it's opened, yes. it means you cannot have a doorknob on the opposite side. Right. So right, the, it can't lie all the way flat. Exactly. It can't lie flat. Um, but Harman hinges are great. That's so good to know. That's so, and it, I love how it creates like a passageway, too. Yeah, like an embrasure almost. Yeah. It's really nice. So the funny thing about the book spines on that door, that clearly the fake book spines, <laughs> is um, I was talking to my office while we were while I was doing the apartment, and they're like, "Well, you can go to the Strand and we can cut the books." Which I mean, wouldn't you feel like the devil? Yes, cutting into a book. So I was like, "This why is this so hard?" And they're like, "Well, we 
we can call the leather person and they can do this. And I'm like, hold on a second. And I just sat down at my computer and wrote fake book spines and there for a door. <laughs> and there was the place in England there that just does it. It makes fake book spines. Yeah. That's awesome. That's and amazing. you can, you can arrange them. Oh, but a really helpful thing that I did that I'm going to share with you again, for those of you doing bookcases, and you don't want it to look too casual. I have put Maya Romanoff leather wallpaper on Ooh. the interior of the bookcase. I love that. So it glows that cashew color. It's really pretty. Um, instead of having just an empty white cavity. I love that. It's beautiful. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm going to ask you one or two more questions and then do our little closing thing because we have some news actually to announce at the very end. Um, somebody wants to know if you've ever designed dishware and if so, where can she find it? I, I have designed it, but I've never manufactured it. Actually, so I have designs, um, but even so, they're so old now that I, I'm dying to do, I'm dying to do tabletop. So fun. I'm putting that out there. Please, universe, let me yes. do tabletop. It's, it's amazing how having a dining room just galvanized my whole appreciation of, of all of the elements. Setting the table, and I love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, uh, one more question. Uh, what is the fabric lining your bed? I think they mean the canopy. It is, I'm sad to say, discontinued. I just found this out. It's from Clarence House. And oh. it is an E-cat taffeta. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Yeah. It. And, and it's the same that I use on the curtains. So, you know, I've got that much of it. Uh, yeah, I love it. Um, well, Alexa, thank you so much for hosting us, basically letting us all come over oh my gosh, thank you. and, and kind of tour your, through your house. It was fabulous. This is by far one of the most fun, uh, you know, design center panels I think I've ever been a part of. Um, and I want to take this moment also to thank ADAC, of course, and to thank yes. Theodore Alexander and all of you for tuning in and to let you know that you can find Alexa's collection for Theodore Alexander at their showroom at ADAC. I think there are either eight or 10 of her favorite pieces yes. on display there to see. But even more exciting than that is the fact that Theodore Alexander is gonna be hosting a launch party for Alexa's collection at High Point in June. So please, yes. if, you're pl if you're planning to go to High Point in June, which I am, I hope all of you are. And you yes, keep please. Yeah, Wait, it's okay. gonna be fun. I mean, it's like a. It's like a party there and not for nothing, okay. Ralph Lauren is also launching at Theater Alexander. So there's lots to see at Theater Alexander. I love it. I love it. I just hearing the this the you say like it's gonna be a party. I'm like, oh my God, is it 19 again? It's, it's so it's scary. We <laughs> we can all wear our hazmat suits and hug. I'm I'm thrilled. I'm I'm here for parties now. So I think I think that sounds great and very exciting. Um, once again, thank you, everybody. Thank you, most importantly, thank to Alexa. Thank you, Steele. Thank you, ADAC. Thank you, Theodore Alexander. I, what a fun afternoon. So fun. So, so fun. And um, safe travels. Uh, as thank you. Friend. Okay, All everybody, right. take care. Kisses. Bye, everybody, Bye. and see you soon. See you soon. Bye.